Say pay. Everybody say this with me. Say, Father. Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you for revealing Jesus to us. Thank you for revealing Jesus to us. And Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for revealing the Father. Thank you for revealing the Father. Well, let's just try that one more time. Amen. Okay. Father. Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. 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 Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Who? Holy Spirit. Thank you for revealing Jesus. Thank you for revealing Jesus. And Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus. Thank you for revealing the Father. Thank you for revealing the Father. Oh, hallelujah. Well, just one more time. <laughs> just one more time. Father, Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you for revealing Jesus to us. Thank you. And Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus thank, you for revealing the Father. thank you for revealing the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. You're about ready to get started. Nope, yep, nope. There's one more responding. There's one more response. There's one more responding. There's one more coming in. There's just one more. Wait, we can wait. Just one, just a little bit. Because there's one more coming in. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Well, I've got so much to say tonight, I should get started. The problem is, I don't want to leave anybody, I don't want to leave any of the information out for the ones who come in late, because they need it all. You know, the Lord, He actually builds sentence upon sentence, paragraph upon paragraph. He builds page upon page, getting the hearts of God's people, you know, ready to receive so that we can have the things that he's purposed for us to have. The Lord's made it really easy. All we have to do is do those things that the Lord has asked of us, and then we can have everything that he's purposed to give us. It's really, can't, it's not any harder than that. If you just find yourself living in this place that the Holy Spirit is here to lead us into. So this is the School of Spirit. What's School of Spirit about? School of Spirit's about learning to be led by the Holy Ghost. Look, here's the problem. Here's the bottom line. People don't know how to connect with the Holy Ghost. That's all there is to it, period. They don't know how to connect with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord Jesus made it so simple. He simply made a way so that you and I could not just have a splash in the presence of the Lord, so we kind of, you know, get to know him a little bit. He baptized us in the Holy Ghost. I mean, my goodness, he didn't just baptize us in the Holy Ghost. He put his spirit within us. But the Holy Spirit is not only with us, but he's in us. Yet people get so stuck in religion, they don't understand the practical relationship function of this, and they live all day long without the manifest presence of the Lord. They live all day long in their pain, their problems, their doubt, their unbelief. It's the human conditions, the human situation that God has made a way for you and I to not even be a part of that. He's made a way for us to live in the heavenly realm. Ha -ha. Hallelujah. Man. So he sent, he sent Pentecost, okay? He sent, the, he sent the Holy Ghost, the first fruits of all that he wants to give us. This is just the first fruits. This is just the getting started. Huh? This is just his down payment of ownership for us. And then isn't it amazing the Lord says, I mean, I can see it turned around. We got a down payment on heaven. He didn't say it that way. He said, my down payment of my guarantee that you, that, that, that you belong to me is I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. First fruits, that's what Pentecost is. This is the first taste of what you're getting ready to have. Ha! So, ha <laughs> ha! And it is heaven. It is heaven. It's the heavenly realm. Now, here's what God wants to do. He wants to take the word, his scripture, 
it, that you read in the Bible and he wants to make it a living reality and description of your life so that when you when you you're thinking, wow, why do I feel this way? Why am I so overwhelmed with divine power and glory? You can look it up and say, oh, that's why I'm that's why I feel joy unspeakable and full, full of glory. That's why I'm rejoicing all the time. The Lord said it right here. Rather than people trying to look at the word and figure out a way that they can have these things. It, 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 the spirit of the Lord brings to us this abundance of faith so that we can do the things that belong to uh, that, that supernatural realm that only Father can do. And people trying to grab a hold of that and have it out of thinking it through and processing it through don't work that way. So tonight, I purpose that everybody in here would be able to leave this place knowing how to connect with the Holy Spirit, knowing how to be led by Him, to be guided by Him. you got to know where He is if He's going to be guided by Him, huh? You could see me, right? You could see me. So I could guide you. Now, all you would have to do is be willing to follow me. You'd be reluctant if I led you down a dark hallway. You're like, where are we going now? Huh? And if you didn't know me very well, you'd be even more reluctant. Okay? And blindfold her. Doesn't matter. She's going to go wherever I'm going to go. She isn't going to have any problem with it. Why? Why? Because she absolutely trusts me. Absolutely. Why? Because she knows me better than anybody else on the planet because she's my wife. Right? The Lord wants us to know him that way. And you're not going to know him that way unless you have a relationship with him that's interactive. He wants you to show you how to do these things. He wants you to test them out. <laughs> he, 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 wants to, he wants to show you how easy it is to have all that Jesus suffered, blood, and died for us to have. He's freely given. You don't have to earn any of this. Okay. Now, so I'm going to start here tonight on, in the school of the Spirit on, with John chapter 16, verse 15. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I connect with the Holy Spirit that way. That shouldn't be surprising. Because when the Holy Ghost was poured out, that's how everybody connected. That's the first thing happened. Huh? Now people don't want that to happen. They don't want that. They want that. Have, they want to say that you know, the church then is different than the church now. The church isn't different now. Church is the same church. Not a different church. Not two-phase church, three-phase church, four-phase church. Church then, now church is a different church today. It's ridiculous. Same Holy Spirit, same Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's, you know, same divine work of grace. And so, you know, when it's a wonderful thing. I mean, I can say that I connect with the Holy Ghost when I begin to read the Word. Absolutely. But see, He makes the Word living in me. He makes the Word alive in me. He, makes, he empowers me to do uh, the Word. Human ability, human strength can't do the Word. You can look at the beauty of it and the glory of it, but you can't do it out of a human realm because it's supernatural. And you're not, you weren't born supernatural. Huh? You can't love your enemies from your heart. You can't forgive from your heart. You can't do all these wonderful things that God's commanded us to do and purposed us to do. You can't sit there and have joy unspeakable and full of glory all by yourself. Huh? You, 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 you can't have the love of God all by yourself. You can't have peace that passes all understanding. You know, perfect peace have they who love thy law. The, you know, we, those whose minds are, uh, there's this wonderful realm of peace that belong to those who have their minds stayed on the Lord. And, all we've got to do is begin to participate with God, the Holy Ghost, and then we're going to be able to freely receive all that He's given. Now, now it shouldn't be difficult to understand how to participate with the Holy Ghost. And one of the things in terms of participating with the Holy Ghost is this language of the Spirit, a lang the language of the Spirit that is given by His divine empowering, His divine it's more than, I start to say influence. It's more than his influence. It's, it's, it's his breathing. It's his inspiration. It's just there. They all spake with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. The Holy Ghost gives me utterance. The Holy Ghost would give me utterance all the time. I was with a bunch of Chinese pastors one day. They were all gathered together. And I said, okay, guy, everybody just start praying in the Holy Ghost. And they all looked at me like, well, we can't start praying in the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, well why not? Well, we've we're we got to wait on the Holy Ghost because nobody can speak in with other tongues, let the Holy Ghost give them utterance. True. But you don't have to wait on him. He's waiting on you. Uh, it's, what, you see, it's supposed to just happen at the end of the meeting. 
huh? or at some special time. That's not true. So we're supposed to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, continually build, you know, pray without ceasing, building ourselves up in the most holy faith, continually praying in the Holy Spirit, continually being filled with the Spirit. That's what God said. Now, if you want that, you're going to have to participate with them. Okay? Amen. So, uh, do you have your Bibles open with me to John chapter, um, John chapter uh, 16, verse 15? Mm -hmm. Everybody there? Yeah. Amen. Give me a few minutes. I'll get there. I got this. He, of course, I'm sure that most everybody in here can quote this verse of Scripture anyways, right? If we if we had a test, how many things how many think how many you think you'd pass the test? If I if I ask you if I ask if I ask you to quote the scripture, huh? Everybody quote the scripture. Well, it's a very important for, scripture for you to quote. If you don't know what you're what's available to you, how do you how are you going to be able to do it? How are you going to be able to function if you don't know what's available to you? How are you going to be able to how are you going to be able to believe it? How are you going to be able to Cooperate with it. Jesus says, all things are given to me of my Father. Jesus has everything. Huh? Yeah. Say, all things are given to me. Jesus said, all things are given to me of my Father. Mm -hmm. this, Jesus, this is what Jesus said. All things are given to me of my Father. So I know that all, Jesus has everything and it's given to him of his Father because uh, I know John chapter 16, verse 15. All things are given to me of my Father. It's perfect doctrine. Nobody can tell me that that's not the truth. That's what Jesus said. Everything he has, and every, he's got all things. Father gave him all. It all belongs to Jesus. All things are given to him in my Father. And he's made it very clear to us that the Holy Spirit will take everything that belongs to him and he will, he will announce it, show it, reveal it, disclose it. And you could even say transmit it. But especially if you look at these particular words, that are used, um, truly announce it, truly show it. Jesus said that the Father is showing him everything that he himself does. Why is the Father showing him everything that he himself does? What is that? That's, that's John 5, 26, or is it John 5, 29? Father shows me everything that he is doing, that he himself is doing, because the Father loves the Son. Now I'm going to ask you, does the Father love you? And I'm going to ask you, are you a son? Are you a son? Have you, been, have you been given the authority to be a son? The, having the authority to be a son is a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. And as many as believed him, as many as received what he's given and what he's supplied to us through the new birth, new birth we become sons. Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean, the sons of God. And, and we're not like little children's sons. I mean, we're like full grown sons. We're sons that have the right to go ahead and do the things that Father has commissioned us to do. And Paul made that really clear in Galatians chapter uh, 4. And verses 1 through 7, you know, he basically opens up there saying, well, as long as you're a child, you're nothing, no different from a servant, even though you're the Lord of everything, even though you've got, even though you've got all the inheritance coming to you, in other words. But because you're just a child, you, you know, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. And therefore, you don't differ anything um, uh, any different from a servant, though you be in the inheritor of every bit of it. But he says, now you and I receive sonship, okay? And we're no more children anymore. We're sonship. So in, John, in Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, Paul makes a clear distinction between being a child and being a son. He makes a child being one who is still held under the law, waiting for the day in which the new birth would come and you and I would be filled up with the Holy Spirit. And not only filled up with the Holy Spirit, but baptized in the realms of His glory. Then we can reflect for a minute on saying that Psalms, like uh, scriptures, like Psalms chapter 25, verse 4, and we hear David's cry in his heart. Teach me your ways, O God. Huh? Show me your ways. Teach me your paths, O God. Teach me the, the, teach me the, the, the things that you want me to do. Lead me in your way, O God. Establish me in your way. So here he, his, his heart's crying out to know God, know God's ways, be able to participate with the Father. And no doubt the Lord answered his prayer, but is nowhere near to the degree that is available to you and I because, because it just wasn't, wasn't available. Those things just weren't even available at the time. Now the Lord Jesus stands with the door, at being the door, the door stands wide open to us 
Father's inviting all of us to come in and participate with him in all of his glory to know what is to know the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, to know the love of Christ Jesus, which passes knowledge, be filled with all the fullness of God. He's inviting us into a realm where we can continually be filled with the spirit and have such ex such rivers of expression of the Holy Ghost that Jesus says it's like rivers of living water pouring out of your innermost being. Then, well, then why don't we do it? Because people don't know how to connect with the Holy Ghost. They've got stuck in the ditch of religion. They think God the Holy Ghost is somewhere so far, far away. How is it we're going to hook up with them? By the way, I'm over here in my doubt and unbelief and, and I'm all concerned with my circumstance and situation. How is it going to get God's attention anyways? What do you mean get God's attention? He's in you. He's in you. If you've been born again, he's in you. Mm -hmm. and somebody said, the heavens are brass. Big deal. See, so what if the heavens were brass? God's on the inside of you. It don't matter. You're, you're not, the inside of you is not brass. <laughs> All you have to do is believe the principle of the faith. Christ in you, his, your confidence of glory. Amen. But maybe you don't have a confidence of glory. There are people who don't have a confidence of glory. They don't know that Christ has been, been has come into their life, that Christ Jesus has come make, set up residence in their lives. And of course, John said in 1 John 3, 24, he said that Christ dwells in us by the Holy Spirit, which he's given unto us. So it's, so it's so important for you and I to begin to understand that when you're born of the Spirit, hallelujah, um, the Holy Ghost came on the inside and that your spirit's joined to the Holy Ghost. And so now you're going to have to understand what is holding you back? What's keeping you back? What's keeping you from connecting with all that Christ Jesus has? Everything. What does Christ Jesus have anyways? What does Christ Jesus have anyways? Everything that the Father has. Huh? And what is, what, what's going on with that? Well, the Holy Spirit is taking everything that Jesus has by direction of the Lord Jesus Christ and by direction of the Father, and he's announcing it tonight. And he's showing it as well. He's revealing it. So that you and I be able to participate with God. And this is for our prophet. And remember the context. Verse 12 says, Jesus said, look, I've got many things to tell you right now. I've got many things to announce to you. I've got many things to share with you. But if I told you, you wouldn't be able to believe it anyways. You couldn't bear it. You couldn't bear it. It's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Ghost can't come. But when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you in all truth. Now, there's another way to translate verse 13 of John chapter 16. You don't have to just say, he will lead you and guide you in all truth. You can't, it is, a, it is a valid translation to say, he will give you guidance in the truth. He will give you guidance in all the truth. And it's valid and it's important to look at it that way because the Holy Ghost isn't going to function or operate outside of truth. If you want to hook up with the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to get into truth. And all the things, there are many, many things that people do in the realms of doubt and unbelief and complaint and concern and earthly interest that have nothing to do with the truth. And we want God, the Holy Ghost, to come over here into my, this, my big gigantic problem and hook up with me and help me figure it all out. He's not going to do that. He's going to call us, come over here into the truth. I want you to come over here into the love. I want you to come over here into the peace. I want you to come over here into the joy because he's going to give us guidance in all the truth. So I, I'm happy with translating verse 13 either way. He gives us guidance in all the truth or he leads us and guides us into all of the truth. Either way, both of them have, uh, have various different uh, dimensions of, of instruction to us that are equally important. Let me say this. In connecting with the Holy Spirit, I, I, I actually see over and again people's witness and testimony of their disconnect with the Holy Spirit. And I'll say, especially when it goes, when, when, when worship's going on, when praise is going on, when all around you prayer is taking place and you hear people passionately, you can hear the sound of hunger. You can hear the sound or the cry of the Spirit of the Son within the heart of those who have now been more developed in relationship with the Lord as they cry out and, and they begin to lift up their voice in thanksgiving. They lift up their voice in, in worship and adoration of Him because that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. You know, He's worshiping the Lord. You know that? On the day of Pentecost, when, they, when the Holy Ghost was 
poured out upon them and baptized in the Holy Spirit. What did all the different folks that uh, spoke different languages hear? They heard them glorifying God and testifying or announcing or declaring all of his wonderful works. That's what the Holy Ghost is doing. He's worshiping the Father. Hallelujah. And then we watch people as they just sit there and they're just disconnected. There's no passion. There's no participation. If you don't participate with what God is doing, you will never connect. I don't care how filled up you might have been at one time. It does not matter if you were born again a dozen times. Or, or, or It doesn't matter what you say you have. If you do not participate with the Holy Ghost, you cannot have anything that He's supplying. Because it's not like God's going to come and He's going to take control of you and it's apart from your will and apart from your yieldedness. It is an active interaction with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So people wanting all these things uh, that, uh, you know, that, that their mind might, Im might imagine that they should have. Meanwhile, what's available, they're simply not connecting with. And then oh, what's worse is people want God to interact with them based upon their terms. Oh, God, I'm sad right now, so you're going to have to just understand. And, and go ahead and help me and connect with me while I'm sitting here sad, disgruntled, unhappy, whatever, uh, doubtful or unbelieving. He's not going to do that. He's in charge, not you, not me. He's the guide. He's the leader. He's beckoning us to come and follow him. And it ain't going to turn around any other way. And we can sit down and we can be stubborn and we can, we can lay down. We can plant our feet in the ground and not move if we want. But you're not going to receive the things that he's supplying either. And it's going to be sporadic. And it's going to be little raindrops every once in heaven. Or it's going to be rain off somebody else's roof. Huh? Now, listen, I'm telling you, there gets to be a culture if we're not careful. Where, you know, God gives an anointing, gives anointing to pastors. He gives anointing to evangelists and he gives anointing to his prophets. And then, hey, you come to the meeting and you go up to the man of God. The man of God lays hands on you and he's been given a special supply of the spirit. And now well, you, you get touched by that. And wow, it feels so wonderful and this is so glorious. Or you get around a man of God who's anointed to preach the gospel and it isn't long in, in the meeting and all of a sudden you start feeling the peace and you start feeling the goodness and you start feeling the joy and you start feeling the happiness and all this is so wonderful. And that's good. It's good. All that's good. But how about what dynamic takes place if you don't understand or somehow you fail to realize that the Holy Spirit is actually going home with you, tabernacling on the inside of you and personally wants you to connect with him and develop you in the same manifest, manifest presence of God, same working of the power of God, same wonderful love, same wonderful joy, same wonderful peace. What happens if you get a concept that you can only have that when you go to church, you get around another man of God. So you're going from one meeting to the next meeting, from one prayer line to the next prayer line. That's not what that prayer line was about. That's not what that meeting was about. That meeting was to help you step in to a realm of connectivity. That meeting is to help you realize what's available to you. That anointing that there is in that person's life is given so that you can have a greater introduction to what's been supplied and made available to you. So there, there's, you know, People don't, people are disconnect. They have a disconnect with God. And, and, and many, I'm talking about Christian people. I'm talking about God's people. I'm talking about Pentecostal people. I watch a lot of Pentecostal people standing there just like this when the power of God is present to fill them and overflow them. And if they're just standing there like this, when the power of God is present to fill them and overflow their life because everybody around them or many or maybe the majority or maybe just half or maybe even just a few are standing there with their hands lifted up and they're entering into a realm. Do you think that that person's entering into the realm because they are special? God loves them more. They're very, you know, they're, 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 they were born with special giftings and qualities and, 
and, and, and, and, or what is it? Because I'm going to tell you, that person that is receiving from heaven is receiving from heaven because they stepped past the thing that's hindering you and when they had stuck their hands up in the air and began to cry out to God, Oh Lord, I worship you. Oh Lord, I love you. Oh God, I'm hungry for you. Lord, come feel me now. Almighty God, how wonderful, how mighty. They started speaking all the words for the Lord had put his words in our mouth through his scripture. Huh? I used to think, oh my, when I was younger, I used to think, wow, be wonderful to be Jeremiah. Be wonderful to be Ezekiel. Be wonderful to be Isaiah. For the Lord put his words in their mouth. And then one day the Lord said, I put, I put my words in your mouth. I give you more than I gave them to them. I've given you a whole Bible full of my word that I put in your mouth. And you need to start speaking that word that I put in your mouth. And, and, and then I've given you an utterance that is so rich. I've given you the richness of utterance that goes beyond the limited portion that I supplied and, and divided among them. I've given you an unlimited expression of praise, an unlimited expression of prophecy, an unlimited expression of the word of knowledge, an unlimited expression of these divine utterances and giftings. And I'm like, oh my, my, this is amazing. This is amazing. Unlimited. Yeah, it's like rivers flowing out of your innermost being. That's how unlimited. Not a little thimble through, thimble full. <laughs> Not, not just little, little, little stream every once in a while, huh? A seasonal stream. <laughs> seasonal streams are not waterways, contrary to popular opinion in San Diego County. <laughs> seasonal streams are not waterways. <laughs> no. Papa has made us. He's made us. This place where he's willing to dwell. He inhabits our life. And some, at some point, we're going to have to start agreeing with him. Say, I believe that. God inhabits my life. Well, if God inhabits my life, then I can experience his manifest presence all the time. That is a great breakthrough. That is a great revelation. There shouldn't be a revelation at all in that he's already said it so many times in his word. But it comes to each verse in his revelation. You mean I can be happy all the time? You'll be happy all the time. Well, how about if I'm in tribulation? Even in tribulation. <laughs> You'll be happy all the time. You can count it on joy. Even you, 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 you can rejoice at midnight in a cell chained to the wall. Paul's and Silas are examples to us. But you've got to learn how to connect with the Holy Ghost. I know that people who sporadically connect with the Holy Ghost live sporadic lives. They live on emotional roller coasters. Do I... Do I condemn anyone for that? No, I just say, get out of that. You don't need to live that way anymore. Why live that way? Father, that's an abundant life for you, a continuous, ongoing, wonderful, glorious time of interaction with the Holy Spirit where everything that belongs to Jesus, which is everything that belongs to the Father, would be continually being announced to us. And I'm telling you, at the announcement of the glorious and good things of God, the whoa. Joy unspeakable and full of glory comes. An overwhelming peace is yours. A faith. When you hear God's word, how does faith come? Hearing, hearing, hearing. Well, 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 hearing the word of God, right? Yeah. Well, what of God the Holy Ghost is announcing, you every, to, announcing everything about God to you. That's a pretty powerful revelation. And you're going to function and operate out of that revelation that you have. Now, here's why people don't, dis here's why people don't connect. Here's why people stay disconnected. It's one of, primarily one of two reasons. It's either a lack of hunger, it's a lack of hunger, or it's unbelief. And, you know, a lack of hunger can come from, from, for a number of reasons. And uh, unbelief can be in, the people's, in people's lives for a number of reasons. Uh, people can have unbelief in their life just because somehow they think God has something against them. And so they just don't feel like they're taking and lift their hands and worship the Lord. And that's just a form of, that's just an unbelief. Because Father didn't have against him, in, anything against anyone. He said, I see him. He says, I see him, Isaiah 57. I see the wickedness of his ways. I see how, he is, how he's destroyed himself. But I shall heal him. And I shall say unto him that is afar off, peace unto him that is near, peace. For I shall heal him. Read it. Pretty rad. He's an amazing God. He stepped out and healed us. He healed us. He done healed us. He healed our, he healed our disease. Hallelujah. He cleansed us from our sin and iniquity. And he continues to do so. 
if we just be, be, believe him, how, hard, how easy it is, to, how easy it is, how easy is it to be forgiven? Simple as asking, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he's going to say, well, I want you to forgive those around you from your heart. And you say, well, Lord, I need, you to, I need your help to be able to do that. He said, no problem. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. How, how do you know you can forgive somebody from your heart? Uh, well, I'm telling you right now, God, the Holy Ghost, said he'd give you the ability to do it. And you ask him for it. How hard is it to get things from Father? As easy as asking. Well, well, well then, then why, why, why does it seem so complicated? Because people ask amiss. They ask amiss. They, they ask a fantasy. They, they, they don't ask out of a relationship. They ask out of just, you know, they, you know they, they think so, but they don't know so. And they don't know so because the relationship hasn't been what God has purposed for it to be. The, you know, when, when you and I, here we, here we asking, the, let's, let's, let's go over there. Let's, let's just pretend for just a minute, okay? Let's go to, Isaac, let's go to Psalm chapter 25. Let's go to Psalms 25 and pull out the electronics. Because I don't, have, I don't have one of those weightier Bibles with me that I want to advise everybody else to have with pages in it. Uh, let's, just, let's just, here we are. Let's just say this. Let's just say this. I don't want four, I don't want four font, four point font. Everybody's got Bibles they want to offer me now. I'm good. I'm good right now. I'm good right now. Let's just pretend this. Let's pretend this for a minute. Let's pretend the Holy Ghost hasn't been given. Okay? And we'll just all be, tri we'll be, just all be of, the Le of the tribe of Levi right now. Okay? Huh? Well, maybe it'd be more fitting if we were just all of the tribe of Judah right now. Okay? And here we are, sitting here in this place, with a promise, a hope of one day. Because this is what most people look like as far as I'm concerned. Promise of a hope of one day. <laughs> Promise of a hope of one day. Oh, God. I mean, it's true. It's true. I watch people stand, stand around just so seemingly so isolated when the place is supercharged. Every, every, every molecule in the atmosphere is charged with the glory of God. I feel like I'm going to be translated. And I look over and there's people standing around just, just separated from his presence. That's hell. That's a form of hell. Hell is the absence of the presence of God. Any measure of separation from the presence of God is a form of hell. And that isn't God's choice. That's in each individual's choice. So how can I possibly have ever choose to be separated from God? Because you choose to, be, to stay in unbelief. You've chosen not to make a connection with the Holy Ghost and have a daily relationship with Him. You want to have a sporadic one. You choose to go over there and occupy yourself with things that you know are displeasing to the Lord. And, in all, and, it, and the worst part of those things displeasing to the Lord is Satan gets an upper hand and runs interference and blocks you out that much more. Huh. With condemnation and guilt, a sense of separation. You've been a bad boy or a bad girl. And then somehow, you know, you're going to have to go through some kind of penance, you know. Huh? Repentance isn't good enough. You need penance. Huh? All lies. So you didn't use lies against us. We're gonna, you believe a lie, you know what's going to happen to you? You'd be damned. But you know what's going to happen to you right now? You'd be separated from the presence. To believe a lie is to be separated from the presence. Ultimately, to be, uh, believe a lie is to be ultimately separated from the presence. Huh? Which is damned. Absolutely separated from the presence. It's damned with no hope back. No forgiveness. You can cry out and ask God all you want. And there's no turning back. Once you step through those gates of hell, there's no coming back. It will never be open. There's no reprieve. There's no suspension of sentence. There's no reduced time. You're there forever. My goodness. I don't want that for anybody. No. You know, the Lord has given us the Holy Ghost so that we can have everything that belongs to Him. See, Jesus was dedicated to glorifying the Father. That's all he did was glorify the Father. And the Holy Spirit is dedicated to glorifying Jesus. Now, if we want to participate with the Holy Spirit, then we've got to be dedicated to glorifying Jesus. And he's not going to be glorified when everybody else standing around praising and worshiping God and being passionate about the things of heaven and touching the realm of heaven. And you standing there going, and, look, say, oh, and then somebody in, in the lost the sinner standing by you saying, um, you know, What's going on here? 
and then and you and you turn to them and say, "Oh, we're just all full of the Holy Ghost," <laughs> because then he's got a false witness. Oh, we just all raptured in glory. <laughs> well, he might the person and say, "Well, they look like there's something going on with them, but you look like me. You look like I feel." You're not glorifying the Lord without praise. You're not glorifying the, the Lord without faith. You're not pleasing God without faith. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit's come to explain. See, the Lord, the Lord says, seek me, you should find me. People think that's one event. People think this is one event. Seek me, you should find me. That's all the time. He's always here. If you're not, he looks at, if you're not having a divine impact of his glory in your life, all you got to do is seek him. And he'd be right there because he's an ever-present God. He's always here. He's living with us, walking alongside of us. And, and you think that somehow God's not around? You need to stop and seek him. You discover he's right here. You can make a connection with God through simply doing what his word tells us to do. Just simply obey God's word. It's just in the heart. People make it all hard and religious. And they believe somehow, you know, there's no way that we can connect with God because, you know, he's wonderful and glorious and we're, we're terrible and evil. That's nonsense. Jesus died to take away the terrible and to take away the evil and to bring us into the family and make us one with the Father and make us holy and acceptable unto the Father. Say to us, peace, come on in. People are still trembling, acting like God's saying, draw not nigh. I'm sure of it. I can see it. I can see it. I can see people come up to the altar and they're just, you can see their rapture in this love relationship and you see people kind of hanging back in their periphery. Because they're hearing, draw not nigh. They're hearing, you can't come near. And they're scared and they're trembling and they get all kinds of you know, awkward looking expressions because of unbelief. 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 Fear lest the promise being left to you, any of you should come short of entering into this realm through unbelief. Paul devotes through two, verse, two chapters of Scripture to it. Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4. He need to come on in. Come on in. It's beautiful in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Ah, this is abundant life. There's plenty of provision here. There's plenty to go around. There's plenty of room. Hallelujah. Everybody can enjoy themselves. There's plenty of supply from heaven. Our provider, our protector, our perfecter is here in this place. And he's inviting everyone to come in. And Jesus is the door. And the door of access is open. But we've got to make sure that we're not standing over here going, you know, show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. And not expecting to something immediately. It's something that somehow there's not going to be an immediate response from God. Okay? Because that's not what the Lord is saying. He's saying, Hey, I came to show you. <laughs> I came to show you my ways. I've come to teach you and lead you in my paths. And he stands at the door knocking in a heart. And if anybody opens up the door, he says, I'm going to come in and we're going to have some good times. We're going to have some fellowship. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've been, in, I've, you know, been invited to go have fellowship with a bunch of of men of God. They've done wonderful things in the kingdom of God. Just, just go hang out three, four days, play golf and, you know, barbecue every night or whatever. Just hang out. <laughs> what a wonderful time. It's great. What, was, what happens after those times? After those kinds of times? You get to know each other more. You get that much closer. Huh? Three, four days out of the year. Some of us are together a little bit more than that. Maybe 10, 15 days out of the year. You really get to become close friends in covenant, really committed to each other. You, you do, because you're people of God, especially people of God. You know, they're not like the world, you know, speaking behind each other's back, running each other's down. I'm not just really covenant people. Well, how, how, what, what kind of relationship do you have with the Lord? Huh? When you get to walk with them every day. I had a person telling me the other night, they stood there with just this cloud of darkness, as it were, over their face because of the sorrow and the sadness and the hurt in their eye. Telling me about how long they've known the Lord. 
I didn't say anything. I just stood there and listened. But you've known about the Lord. Because if you knew him, you wouldn't be looking like that. When you know him and you're touched by his presence, oh, hallelujah. I mean, you light up when he comes in the room. He's always in the room. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then, and then if you happen to get yourself into some trouble and some circumstances and besetting situations that capture, capture your emotions and your affections for a little while, you just, you, because you know who he is, because you know him and how wonderful he is and how, mu how much he cares for you and how dedicated and devoted he is to you. you. You turn your heart to him, you seek him, and he's immediately found of you. He's the presence of the Lord fills the room. Okay? I wake up, I'm going to wake up in the morning, I think, I think. I'm going to go to bed at night, I'm going to wake up in the morning, hopefully I sleep all the way through the night, I'm going to go to bed, in, amen, I'm going to go to bed tonight, I'm going to wake up in the, the morning to a fresh new day, okay, I don't have to wonder if the manifest presence of the Lord is going to be there, the manifest presence of the Lord will be there for me, he will be there for me, now, I wake up just like everybody else, you know, tired, trying to hold my eyes open, a little bit, a little bit overworked, holding my eyes open, and then, you know, but it doesn't take long, and I'll make a, con though I can feel the manifest presence of the Lord when I wake up, I'll make a connection with God. I'll make a connection immediately with God, the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to take him for granted. He's there. I'm not going to take my wife for, for granted. Not in any way. I mean, there's always going to be that interaction going on. Because I love her. Because she's, you know, why? So I'm going to have an interaction with the Holy Ghost. I'll make a connection with the Holy Ghost because he's there. I know he's there. I know he's here. I know he's, not, I know he's here, but I also know he's out here too. He's alongside of me, the person. And so I'll just acknowledge him. I say, Holy, I'll just say something like, Holy Spirit, I'm so thankful that you're here with me. I just want you to know. I tell him this every day. I want you to know I, I don't want to do anything except for what you want me to do. I, I only want to live for Jesus and you're the only one who can make that possible in my life. I don't look to myself. I'm, I look to you. I'll just say some things like that. That'll go on for a while. I'm not praying. Not in religious prayer. I'm praying. But it's relationship prayer. I'm talking yeah. to my companion, my comforter. That's why I'm comforted all the time, because I'm a comforter. I know how to get my comforter. Hallelujah. I know how to talk with him. I'm, that's why. I have great peace. I walk in great peace. Because the Prince of Peace rules over my life. And I keep my heart and my mind in this realm of peace. Because the Holy Spirit has given me the ability to do so. And I have this wonderful peace because it's the fruit and evidence of the Holy Spirit having free course in my life. I'm not stopping him, not telling him, I don't want you around. Or I'm not saying, I'm not going to allow myself to get, and no one really says that, I don't want you around. We just become consumed with our circumstance. We become consumed with our situation. That, that my, what is real to me is I feel for myself that that's the same as saying, I don't want you around. Because that's what it is to me. And I'm not going to, and I am probably made it that dramatic because I never want to say that. I want to always make sure that he knows he has first place in my life. And so then what I'll do is I'll, I'll begin to do that which is just a part of my life, that he's made a part of my life, that is as much a part of speaking as any other kind of speaking, so much so Paul said, I speak in tongues the language of the Spirit more than all of you. Hallelujah. And he said that with every prayer and petition and supplication, it should be done praying in the Holy Ghost. It's what he said, Ephesians 6, 18. And he said, be filled with the Spirit. And that we understand how that, how that operates. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We understand what those prophetic songs. Songs, hymns are songs that record events of moves, great moves of God in your life. That's what a hymn is. Or great events or moves of God in the church. That's what we sing. Hmm? Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. We're singing, about, we're singing 
a captured event of consecration that took place in the late 1800s. We sing it still today. Hallelujah. Spiritual songs. Mana nasatena ne mengalese paradai. Is a spero taranesatea. He says, what, what, what will we do? We will pray in the spirit and we'll pray with the understanding also. Paul made it very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that praying in the spirit was praying with tongues that no one else could understand. He made it very clear. Unmistakable. Devote a whole chapter to the clarity of it. No one is without excuse here. And people shouldn't be trying to find an excuse anyways. He said, what we'll do? We'll pray in the Spirit. He said, pray in the Spirit first. I will pray in the Spirit, and then we'll pray with the understanding also. Huh? And he said, what we'll do? We said, we'll sing in the Spirit. And we'll sing with the understanding also. Hallelujah. So I get up in the morning, and because I'm giving myself to following Paul as he followed Jesus, because I'm in the same church as the Apostle Paul. I belong to the same church. Same organization. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we, 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 we adhere to the same doctrine. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I bet I'm going to name it. And I'll just be walking around down the manga day with a day. Just like you would be just walking around thinking. I walk around thinking about nothing. Just bone the Because when your bundle stuck out on a monday, not a thought can enter in your head. She banged a lean to bed and I. It's just the way it is. And then I'll notice that I, I'm under a mantle of divine glory and power. Now I'm ready. I'm ready for the day. I'm ready to do what? Represent Jesus. Why? Because I'm hooked up with the Holy Ghost. Because he's the only one who can glorify Jesus and represent Jesus. Huh? The rest of it is nothing but religion. Huh? Only the power of the Holy Ghost can come make him known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Holy Ghost comes every day. Not once. So we think just happened one time or special meetings. He comes every day announcing to me. He announcing good news. Good, glad tidings of great joy. Guess what you get to do today? Faith and power and unlimited expressions of divine goodness. I'm here to lead you in the ways of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so this isn't, this is, this is, I get to look at a, a chapter, a couple of verses of scripture like this, show me your ways, the Lord teach me your past. And I get to look at it in a different way. Instead of me asking the Lord so much, he's asking me. And I just simply respond to him and say, yes, Lord, I want to hear and see and know your ways today as you teach me, as you announce these things. I want to be led and be guided by you. I want to walk in the school of the spirit because he's come to teach us all things. People think they can know things and discover things on their own. And I'm desperate for them. And I'm going to keep myself desperate for them. I'm going to keep myself hungry. I'm going to keep myself passionate. He's going to hear me continually. And nobody's going to outpraise me. <laughs> and it's not like I'm in competition. It's just I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And you might be loud, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I'm loud too. <laughs> I'm going to be louder because as you get louder, I get louder because I, it's like an inspiration. It's like deep calling out of deep, man. And I'm already filled up and and, and overflowing with this divine expression, I hear somebody else having a Holy Ghost uh, shout and, and coming out of their innermost being, and it just takes what's going on inside of me to another level. Hallelujah. That's heaven. Amen. That's all my emotions got just cut, got 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 connected with what the Holy Ghost is feeling, huh? We could, do, we could take that little face off that little plug-in over there. <laughs> that little wall plug-in over there. We take the face off that thing. We just line everybody up. And let you wet your fingers and grab a hold of the poles of that. We're going to hear a shout every other one of you. You're going to hear a shout. <laughs> You're going to shout. And we're going to see some expressions on your face. We're going to see some reactions of your body. Huh? That's not a doctrine. <laughs> huh? That's not a special expression that belongs to a few people. Everybody on the planet is going to have the same kind of reaction <laughs> and the same kind of a shout when they touch the poles of that, of, the, of that electrical current. I don't care what the color of your skin is, what your culture is, what your background is, how, 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 you know, reserved your ancestors were. What does it matter? <laughs> Same. Now, just imagine t being touched by the presence of the Lord. 
And then to believe that you can only be touched by the presence of the Lord when a man God touches you is a mistake. Because my Father has come filled you up. Amen. Huh? Amen. Oh, well, the Lord bless Israel because I'm telling you right now, they saw his glory far off and said, we cannot abide it. We can't bear it. We don't even know how to interact. And yet the Lord brought his glory and put it on the inside of us and we can't bear it and we don't know how to interact. Huh? Now, 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 now. Let me help you out with a couple of basics here. First of all, you're not, yourself, you're not your own. You don't belong to you, so quit acting like it. Huh? You don't have the right to have your own. You don't have the right nor the time to have your own attitudes, your own opinions, and doing your own thing. Because you bought with a price to glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are His. Now, you need to get that settled. You're His purchased possession. You should be very happy about it. Amen. 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 And it's a lot better belong, being, it's a lot, it's a lot better belonging to God than it is belonging to you. It's belonging to yourself. Second thing, the Lord says that if any man will come after me, if anybody wants to go where I'm going, if anybody wants to be led the paths of righteousness, to be taught the ways of God, then let him deny himself, take up his cross. Okay? So, and, 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 and the, the cross specifically declares you no longer live for your own will. You live to do the will of the Father. Now, Jesus had to go to the cross and suffer, bleed, and die for us. That isn't necessarily what we're going to have to do. Well, Peter did. There's a few other people that would suffer great persecution. There's a few other people that have been martyred over the years. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a martyr and, 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 and you doing the will of the Father is going to be defined that way. But I can tell you there's a, a lot of things that are very common to all of us that would express and define what it looks like when you're no longer living for your own interest and for your own will and for your own purposes and you no longer express your own dissatisfactions and your own disappointments and have your own, you know, issues going on in your life. You say, wait a minute, I don't live for that monetary need. I don't live for that personal gain or that personal praise or those personal needs or that personal satisfaction. I live to do the will of the Father. I'm here as a representative of heaven. I'm here to walk out this life of living in the Spirit where the evidence or the fruits of the Spirit or the witness of the Spirit is being continually seen and expressed in my life. I am going to deny myself in the realm of any kind of disappointment. I won't allow it. I'm going to deny myself in the realm of any discouragement. I will not allow it. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to deny myself in any dimension that is contrary to the nature and ways of God. Amen. Because maybe I got, I hear all these, got all these hurting Christians. Poor people. <laughs> you need to deny yourself rather than somebody come alongside you and counsel you and talk to you about why it is you got hurt and sympathize with you because of that honorary person that hurts you. <laughs> You need to deny yourself and say, I'm not going to be hurt. That is going to get in the way of God, the Holy Ghost, being able to glorify Jesus in my life. I don't allow that. I'm going to be living for the will of the Father. Let them say whatever they want to say about me. I'm going to get filled up with the Holy Ghost and bless them. Let them do whatever they want to do with, against me. I'm following Jesus. I'm going to lay down my life for the brethren. I mean, living to be a peacemaker, a peace creator. Living to give and express God's love. That's all you are about. You aren't God's vengeance department. <laughs> you with me. Huh? You laying down your life. Now you're doing what Father, you're doing what the Holy Ghost is doing. You're participating with Him. But you gotta understand, people, I understand. Listen, step number one. When the praise is going on, are you gonna be sad? Be sad later if you got to be sad. Be sad all by yourself in the closet. But don't be sad out here in public. 
Because that's not bringing Father any praise or honor. That's not glorifying Jesus. That's not doing anything for you in the company of the saints where you are ultimately now res re responsible to represent heaven. Look, the God has brought pastors and evangelists and apostles and prophets and teachers and, 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 and pastors <laughs> and more pastors to perfect you. Amen. And how do we do that? We, we declare the word of God to you. We lay hands on you. We model these things of heaven. We walk in this manifest presence so you can walk, so you can be touched by this glory of heaven. It's easy to get a breakthrough, if you would. It's easy to step right into his presence because we're empowered by the Lord to set a table, as it were. But you have to respond. You have to participate. You have to follow us. You have to do what we do. You need to get over here. And if we start dancing on one foot, you should start dancing. I mean, it's not that. Uh, you know what I mean. It's not really to that level because then we got a bunch of people religiously dancing on one foot. And they look just as sad as they did before they started. But I mean, if, you was, if the heart was really there to say, I want, I want you, Lord, more than anything else. I'm so passionate for you. Lord, I want you to lead me in your ways. I, wanna, I want you to teach me those things that only you can teach me. And then you hear, you hear the Lord saying, I'm going to lead you. I want to lead you. Just respond. And then we begin to participate in faith. We begin to draw near, near to him with a true heart in full assurance of the faith, and we begin to love him, and we begin, begin to thank him for his presence. There, there have been times that I've lifted my hands, many times, and I began to thank the Lord for his presence, and I didn't, as it were, feel any measurable manifest presence of the Lord. I was overwhelmed with situation or circumstance, or just being so exhausted so tired and then just go Lord I just thank you so much for your glory and I'm going to fall out here <laughs> because it really is that real to me I, I, can, I cannot interact with God and him not reciprocate those days are over forever and I am dedicated to making sure that those days are over forever for you too. You have to learn how to receive. You are only going to learn how to receive those things that the Holy Spirit is supplying as you're willing to be obedient and participate. You're willing to say, I don't care, come hell or high water, I'm right there in your presence, Lord, worshiping you. Come sorrow, sadness, madness, or whatever else might have ever try to come my way, you're going to find me rejoicing and enjoying in you. Because nothing matters to me but you. I'm not going to let anything else eclipse you, God. I'm not going to let anything else stand between you and me. Not a flat tire. Can you imagine some people making a flat tire bigger than God? true. How did this happen to me? I'm on my way to church. I got a flat tire. This is amazing. God, where are you at? It's not God's fault. <laughs> blame it on God. Be, be, blaming on God. It's the bald tire's fault. It's the nail in the road's fault. <laughs> Put the blame where the blame is due. It's the physical laws of friction. <laughs> Father deserves praise that you alive yeah. and you made it through that flat tire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. I wrote one of the best songs I've ever written in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Three kids in the car. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> On Highway 99, somewhere between Bakersfield and Fresno. No spare. <laughs> and we were having a rough moment because we, we had not taken a vacation. We had been running hard in ministry and the things the Lord has doing at work. We had not taken a vacation. 
And, you know, we, we were having some rough times. My mom was a little bit sick. Kids were screaming. I was just unhappy. Flat tire goes down. I got out of the car and I began to worship him. I was worshiping before, but I began to worship. I began to worship. A song came up out of my belly. Huh? Hallelujah. <laughs> when a song comes up out of your belly, you so in the presence of the living God. I mean, everybody's protected. Everybody's safe. Everybody's fine. I found, the, I found a, a place to live in the praises that only the Holy Spirit can produce. I want you to find this place. It's not religious. I didn't have to. His relationship. I was overwhelmed by his goodness. What song did I sing, baby? What was And it goes on. Yeah. And it goes on. And I took, and big deal. Who, 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 didn't anybody ever get hurt by a little work? It's no big deal. Just take the tire off. We, we experts at making mountains out of molehills. <laughs> the Lord's given us the faith to make molehill, to make mountains into molehills, to make mountains plains, and we, we turn it around. Just take the tire off. <laughs> Crossroads, somebody immediately picks me up. Immediately. Goes, gets fixed quickly, easily, better than it was before. Then I get driven back. And I'm back in record timing. <laughs> it could have been a whole lot worse. I could have been out there kicking the tire. <laughs> My own creation, I could have created that. I could have created that. I could have created that. Watch out, you better watch out. You might be creating a whole bunch of problems for yourself. Create a whole bunch of heartache, a whole bunch of poverty, a whole bunch of sickness, a whole bunch of disease, a whole bunch of suffering. God had nothing to do with it. God's word has not changed. He was simply willing to be the healer, the savior, the baptizer, the giver of every good thing. You chose, I choose, we choose what we're going to do. And in the context of the church, dear people, you and I can get built up. Hallelujah. And, and if we just simply respond to the Lord in the things that he's speaking to us in the context of church and participate, what's going to happen is you're going to get, you're going to mature. And as you mature, God's going to give you a work of the ministry. And now that you get to function in the a work of the ministry by the Holy Spirit, then the whole church is going to be built up and strengthened. And it just keeps getting bigger and stronger. And I mean, the first thing that God wants everybody in this place to learn how to do is to smile. I mean, to think about it, that you can get an enough in, of, a, of a relationship with the Lord going to where they're happy all the time. To where the, he, he just puts this gigantic smile on your face. He puts this great gladness in your heart. If there's anything that quantifies relationship with the Lord, it's joy. Read it. Read it. From Genesis to Revelation, it quantifies joy. One great man of God said, was asked in his generation, what if you had to describe Revival in the church and a move of God among his people. What word would you use? The word he used was joy. Joy. He's put everlasting joy on our head. Yes. He's filled us with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. The joy of the Lord is our strength in the day of adversity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Hallelujah. I write these things unto you that your joy may be filled. I announce these things to you that your joy may be full. Holy Ghost has come to announce to us everything that Jesus has. And we heirs and co-inheritors with us, with him. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? I want you to, I want you to grab a hold of this. And, uh, and I'm going to actually find my electronics. And I want to read this to you. Um, because the Lord so stirred me. I, I, I woke up this morning and I said, Lord, today, you know, I'm going to minister on the school of the Spirit. What is it that's in your heart that you want your people to learn? What is it that you want them to do? What would you have me tell them? And I no sooner said that, and my fingers went to typing. I went and went, 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 sat down real quickly, and I began to type. And out of that, I, I extracted, of course, I put it up on the Facebook today. I know Chris just sent it out as a daily bread probably tomorrow. But out of that, I extracted a couple sentences that I believe is the biggest concern to the Holy Spirit should be the biggest concern to us because it's going to make the difference as to whether we know how to connect with him and receive that which he is supplying or whether we're left continually to be going it on our own. And this is what I heard the Lord say. The lack of engaging God, the lack of engaging God is noteworthy in praise and worship and prayer because it dem demonstrates the huge disconnect that exists between the individual and their God. The lack of engaging God. Father loves us. He loves relationship. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. If you're going to come to Him, you've got to know that He's there. Huh? And the Holy Spirit's come to cause us to know that He's here. That Christ Jesus is here. That He loves us. That He's, that he's here. And the more we engage Him, the more He unveils and reveals that He's here. And the more that that happens, the more you actually able to feel His manifest presence. It touches every cell of your body. I was sitting in the car before the meeting. I said, Lord, now, if this gets any more intense, I'm not going to be able to walk up the stairs. <laughs> I, honestly, Lord, I'm not going to be able to make, I'm not going to be able to move. I don't even want to move. <laughs> and that keeps getting greater. And out of that comes an outworking. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's heaven for my soul. It's peace that passes understanding. It's joy that's unspeakable. It's the love of Christ that passes knowledge. But the outworking of it is so wonderful. Now I get to help others. Now I get to move in signs and wonders and miracles. Now I get to represent Jesus. Now I get to represent him in a way that I get to bring glory and honor to his name as I witness of all that he's done. Not by my own testimony, but by the testimony of the Spirit of the living God that is living and abiding on the inside of me, which I voluntarily, purposefully participate with. I engage God. I will engage Him. And nothing going to hold me back from Him. I discovered a long time ago in ministry that you, so you said, oh, movings of God are just, movings of God are just in seasons. I discovered you can have a move of God every time you have a meeting. And when I did, I started in this church, I have a move of God every meeting. Every one. And they might start a little tough, <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, it's going to end up good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and then, and then, then I discovered I could have a move of God in my own personal life at any time, anywhere, any place. Hallelujah. 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 Sitting over in a, 
in a place that any, any person from the Middle East, any Egyptian tell you if you go there, you fall off the end of the earth, you never return. It's a prison out in the middle of the desert outside of Alexandria, Egypt, sitting there looking at all these guys with a smirk on their face as they basically telling me, you know, they got me. I'm, on, I'm over here, ain't got nothing. I'm over here in the cloud. <laughs> I'm over here in the cloud of His divine glory. I've got so much boldness and so much confidence. I'm in control. They think they're in control. I'm in control. Why? Because I'm connected with the one who has all power and all authority, who rules over everything that exists. <laughs> Hallelujah. And nobody can do anything to me unless Father allows it. And whatever he allows, I'm very happy to participate with. I, well, that's exactly what I want, because I live to do thy will, O oh God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so easy to get a bunch of people to it together and to get them to agree. All they need to do is all agree that they want to do the will of the Father. Amen? Amen. The lack of engaging God. This is the Holy Ghost talking. The lack of engaging God is especially noteworthy in praise and worship. Don't ever do it again. You want to learn how to walk in the Spirit? You want to come into the school of the Spirit? Engage God. Engage God out of hunger. Engage God out of faith. Knowing that everything in the Bible that He said is available for you right now, right here, right at this moment and at that moment, any moment, it's always there. Hallelujah. You can always have, you have as much as you are willing to receive and as you receive, He will enlarge your heart to receive more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Always engage God in praise and worship and prayer. Get right in there. I was just, I was so blessed as, you know, Ruth Ann and a few other people were just on Wednesday night. Boy, they just started, they started going there. And as they started going there into that place of praise and worship and adoration, Amen. I could feel it build. I could feel it begin to spread. It becomes a fire that burns. It spreads like a fire. What happens if everybody is already on fire in the Holy Ghost? See, I don't have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost in a meeting because I came baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Yeah. And Papa wants us to live this way. He wants, to live, he wants us to live continually baptized in His presence. To be filled is equal to being baptized. I can prove it to you in Scripture. Hmm? Jesus said in Acts 1, 5, said you'll be baptized not many days from now. Huh? And then not many days from that, the time that He said that, they were all filled with the Spirit. Are you with me? Yeah. Yep. That being filled with the Spirit was the baptism he talked about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And the Lord says, be continually filled. So I could say, be continually baptized. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I just want to say this, and, and you know, there are two main reasons for this disconnect. This is what the Lord says. There's two main reasons for this disconnect. Unbelief and lack of hunger. The Lord says, hunger and thirst after righteousness, you be filled. Huh? The Lord tells us this. He said, make my kingdom and my righteousness more important to you than anything else. And I'll give you everything. That's what he says. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Make my kingdom. Make my manifest presence. Make all these things I described in my word that you've seen when Elijah walked the earth, that you've seen when, 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 when Moses stood in my presence. Make all these things that were manifested in the life of my only begotten son. Hallelujah. Make all the things that belong to the realm called heaven, which is a synonym for the Holy Ghost. See, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, he said, if I cast out devils and work miracles, by the Holy Ghost, then the kingdom of heaven has come to you. Then the kingdom of God has come to you. That's what he said. Realms of the Spirit, the realms of heaven, the realms of the kingdom, all synonyms. Make this realm, this glorious, blessed gift in God's divine grace that he's poured out upon all flesh. No one's left out. You can't say God isn't doing this in me. No, you're not letting him. You're not letting him. He is. He's poured out his spirit upon all flesh. He is not a liar. 
He's poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. He's made the baptism of His glory available to anyone simply for the asking, not the begging, the asking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If there's a problem on the receiving side, begin to let God deal with the issue in your life. Is it unbelief? Is it unbelief because you captivated by the cares of this life? Is it unbelief because you feel like God doesn't love you? You've, you've, been, you've listened to a lie. Whatever it is, just begin to let the Holy Spirit show you and then refuse to have it in your life anymore. And let God, the Holy Ghost, strengthen you and empower you, give the ability to cast down those imaginations and He'll do it. All you have to do is say it, and He'll do it. He will. You say it. And I'm talking about relation things. You say it. You say, oh, God. Uh, you ask Him. He ordained you and called you to bear this kind of fruit that whatever you ask Him, He'll do it. You just say it. You just ask Him. Say, Father, fill me up with this glory. Fill me up with this divine grace. Fill me up with this divine ability. I'm never going to be sad again. I never want to be sad again. I never want to be mad again. I never want to be ugly again. Huh? I never want to be angry again. Huh? Huh? Hey, come on. I want mom broom jala gamana jala na mande. I want to be a peacemaker. Oh God, I want to be a love provider. I want to be a, I want to be a, a a joy giver an expression of joy. And, how it is that you talk to him at that moment in time regarding the things that he wants for your life. He didn't do it. Before you call, he'll answer. He just sees your meditation in your heart. Hallelujah. I want this for you. Father wants this for you. The other night I told you, I said, just lift your hands towards heaven. And then... I spoke a word. I announced a word. I said, and no matter where you're at, all you need to do is lift your hands towards heaven. And as soon as you do, you experience the glory of God. One day I was talking to the Lord. I said, Father, help me express people how easy it is to feel your presence. How easy it is to interact with you. How easy it is to receive from you. And the Spirit of the Lord Tommy said, stick out your hand. <laughs> and I stuck out my hand. And as, now this is a little strange. This is a little strange. But go with me. Because the Lord's wanting me to just grab a hold of how easy it is. I stuck out my hand. And as I did, it's as though my hand went right over into heaven. It's as though there was just, it was just, all that realm was just right there. And I stood there. I, it's as though I plugged into a realm and I'm, I'm just being overwhelmed with joy unspeakable and full of glory, overwhelmed with divine expressions of glory. Huh? It's, it makes grabbing a hold of that electrical current nothing. Immediately... Rivers of divine expression are produced. Faith is produced. We sit in this room tonight because of faith at work. We are occupied on this property because of the working of faith. Man can't do this. Somebody asked me the other day, said, how much did it cost you to move in that $14 million property? I just laughed. I said, you wouldn't believe it. He said, how do you do... Where, where, how do you find these deals? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. How did you get invited over there? It doesn't work that way. Who do you know? I, I know the Holy Spirit who come to reveal Jesus to me. Let me say this. Without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to know Jesus. I'm going to say it again. Without the Holy Ghost, it's impossible for you to know Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to testify and give witness of Jesus. Those who were hung out with him for over three years, who saw him, who ate with him, who walked with him, who, whose hands held him, whose eyes beheld him, 
who even were there with him in the Mount of Transfiguration, who were there when he walked upon the water, who were there who rose from the dead, who handled his body. After that, he rose up from the dead. He said, you can't be my witnesses till you baptized in the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost to be able to represent me. And if, if for them, that's the case, how much more for us? Huh? We need to come into the school of the Spirit. Did you know people watching Saudi Arabia, people watching in 117 nations of the world, the webcast, people, over 100, 100, and, over 100 people watched, watched in Saudi Arabia just the past couple of months. Huh? Watching the School of the Spirit, South Korea, Japan. It's a long list. Isn't that awesome? People want to be in the School of the Spirit. People want, I, I got an email from God the other day. He said, I just want to go to a church where I don't, I'm not told to be quiet when I just do this. This praise is one to bust out of me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Could you please help me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I want to shout. And they say, I can't shout. I want to jump and I want to leap. What's wrong with me? There's something going on inside of me. There's something terribly wrong with me. Because I can't keep it quiet. Is there any place that we're allowed to just go ahead and just bust loose with praise and adoration and love and affection for the living God? And I'm not kidding you. Someone from India, Hyberdad, India. I said, Bubba, shout louder. That's about my answer right there. Just shout louder. Just be more passionate. Be more desperate. Be like blind Barnabas when they tell you to be quiet. Cry out a little out more, you know. I didn't say that last part because you got to be careful with that. But that's what I felt. And more than likely, he's watching or going to watch this YouTube. And, you know, they have to be, they have to, they have to be in that prison called a church. <laughs> I just had to say it. I'm sorry. I was trying to be think. Trying to think so it's not supposed to be that way. The Lord will deliver them. The Lord will, deli the Lord will raise up churches in Hybrid Dead. Yes, He'll raise up churches. You don't sit there and be quiet. Amen. 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 I'm going to come. I'm going to go to Hybrid Dead. I'm going to jump around. Shout and praise in the name of Jesus. Let everybody understand you can worship the Lord. When he touches you, how, what, how can you be quiet when he touches you? Get passionate with the Lord. Get hungry. Don't let any lie, don't let any harassing, tormenting thought separate you from him or hold you back or keep you back in any way from telling him how wonderful he is. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't get caught up in how problematic you are. Because <laughs> that's not a meeting. I was looking at some people the other day. I'm about wrapping this up. I'm looking at some people in the meeting the other day, and I'm thinking, what if they were leading the meeting? What would this service look like? I do not believe they would stay in the meeting that they would lead. <laughs> I know I wouldn't. Are you with me? Don't do that. Look, look in your engaging God like a meeting that you would like to be in. Don't wait for somebody else to show up. The right one showed already. Holy Ghost. And he's announcing that everything that belongs to Jesus is yours. He's announcing. And when you hear that announcement, you get excited. If they knocked on your, if they knocked on your door in the morning, you know what is that? Uh, the. Uh, Publishers clearing house. What is it? What is it? Babe? What is it? Publishers. 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 Pub I can speak in the La Montada de Maya better than I can do the, the rest. Publishers clearing house. Yep. Okay. 
<laughs> and they said, okay, we're, you just won $2 billion. How you want us to give it to you? You want us to give you like $100,000 a day? Or would you rather <laughs> have it all one payment? You're not going to stand there and go. It really doesn't matter, whatever, because you're not. You would jump it around, free at last, free, free at last, and whatever. The Holy Spirit's come to announce something far better to us. He's always doing it. Not one time, he's always doing it. He tells me about my place. He tells me about how Jesus feels about me, how Father loves me, and about all that he's given to me and all that's made available to me. I don't have to worry or concern myself about anything forever, for he'll forever perfect those things that, that concern me, that he's my author and my finisher. He, he that began a good work shall also complete it. He's telling me all these wonderful things. Mm -hmm. He wants to tell them to you, too. You'll get excited. He's not going, oh, man. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, I can't believe you, man. I can't believe you. You really disappointed me. You just really let me down. Man, I, I don't even know. How did you show up in the meeting? He's not doing that. That's the other guy. That's the enemy of your soul. Don't listen to that mess anymore. Because you if you, whatever you believe, whatever you believe, and whatever you agree with, that is what you will be led by. Don't be led by the powers of darkness. Don't be led by lies. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Be led and be guided into all the truth. He's come to give you guidance in the truth, in all truth. Just participate with him. What's he doing? Praising, worshiping, dancing. You can see Father do it. Zephaniah 3.17. He rejoice over you. He rejoice over you with singing. Do it with him. <laughs> I was um, at my son's wedding and when the Holy Spirit inspires me to do it I just <laughs> breathe out like my master showed me to do he <laughs> breathed out and said receive the Holy Ghost and so my son's wedding there's Joshua and Ellie and I went And, of course, they immediately were impacted by it. Um, my dad was standing there, too, and he was impacted by it. And I don't know if anyone else was, but there was a guy there who doesn't know anything about the Lord. He goes, man, when you breathed, when you blew like that, he said, I never felt anything like that in my life. It is amazing where you find sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. Sometimes all the ideas and all the concepts will block your way. All the ideas and all the concepts about God will block your way. Here's somebody who knows nothing about God. Wow, when you blew out like that, I never felt anything like that. What was that? They didn't have to sit there and wonder about whether they were accepted or rejected. They never, they were, it was not even an issue. And even, they never entered their mind. They were just sitting there expecting nothing, thinking nothing, doing nothing. I want you to, from this day forward, I want you to just relax. I want you to relax. Kick back. I want you to relax. You know what they did on Passover? Very, it was a t t difficult night. It was a difficult night. Everybody understand Passover was a difficult night? Mm -hmm. yes. People are dying in every house. <laughs> Screams going on in every house. Firstborn child, every house, people dying. It's time to kick back on the cushion, <laughs> recline, <laughs> relax, <laughs> have some food, <laughs> worship, because you're under the protection of the living God. There's a great provision for you to keep you, take care of you. 
Never get upset again. Don't worry anymore. Huh? Huh? With total, because you have total abandonment. That's why the scripture says, cast all your cares upon him. For he cares for you. God said, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious for anything. Huh? Don't. Cast your cares upon him. What does that mean? Total abandonment. I'm yours, Lord. I'm ready to go to heaven right now. I'm ready to whatever. Everything I've got is in you, and all everything I want is in you. And I'm going to let everybody know it. And I'm going to shout it from the housetops. Huh? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not let the rocks do my praising for me. <laughs> I'm going to lift up my voice and sing. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift up my voice and declare the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Well, love the richness of his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So reality of it is, is prophecy is right there with you right now. Word of knowledge, miracles, signs, wonders. Everything that you have, get to faith that you need to call in finances. Amen. You know what the enemy of that is? Worry. Fear. Fear. We, I taught my son at an early age, you have mastery over all creation, everything in creation, if you have no fear and you have authority. You know? When those you know, dust storms, those dust devils start coming at you, just go, Moo. And they go the other way. They're coming right at you. <laughs> they go that way. Huh? And the kids are standing around watching it. Say, yellow jackets, whatever. You have to get away, go. You can't touch me, stay in your hole. <laughs> one of the boys came out, one friend came out and rode one of the motorcycles and landed the thing right in the yellow jacket hole in around July. And they're not very friendly, ever. <laughs> but July, they're extra <laughs> aggravated. They're extra aggravated. And, you know, just walked right over, picked it up, told it, total peace. If you, can, if you can move out of fear and start walking in peace, start walking in love. Get to faith works. Things have to listen. Things have to obey. Things have to line up according to God's will. Huh? There's a place to walk upon the water. Huh? There's a place to command the wind and the wave. There's a place huh? to say to the wild beast, shh, go sleep. Huh? Not to be fearful anymore. Oh, the mountain lions are watching. The, look, he opens up his hands and feeds the lions and even the young lion. And you're not on the menu. Fear not. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be concerned with the rest of the world. By the arrow that flies at night, or the pestilence that waxes, that, that wasteth rather at, at noonday. And that, you don't have to fear. Why? You dwell in a secret place under the shadow of the Almighty. Huh? If you walk through the fire, it can't, the flame can't kindle on you. Huh? You say, I don't burn. My, my son, my oldest son, Joshua, was in a meeting. His, what was, as Joshua was 12, we were in a meeting one night. How God's moving. And he just came forth in a strong way and utterance. The flame cannot can, can upon you. God's saints don't burn. The next day, a battery exploded in his face. And he said, I don't burn. Got in his eyes, got on his face. No, fell, no, no, no ill effect. If you walk through the water, it shall not drown you. <laughs> Sink to the bottom and breathe. I mean, that's what the scripture says. You say, well, it's an allegory. I don't believe it's an allegory. You can tell me that the three Hebrew children were an allegory. They got thrown in the fire. Flame did not kindle upon them. They're not an allegory. It's not a hyperbole, which is just, it's just a nice way to say that God's exaggerating. It's what a hyperbole. Go look it up. There's no hyperboles in the Bible. There's a few allegories. 
No hyperboles. No exaggeration. Finances? <laughs> nuclear bombs? <laughs> What's more powerful than a nuclear bomb? The sweet presence of Jesus that I feel right now. <laughs> he, my, God is a shield about me. He's a shield about you. What do you have to fear? What is it there to fear? Why don't you learn to walk in the Spirit? Come to the school of the Spirit. Come to the school of the Spirit. It's not hard things. It's not difficult things. It's very easy things. It's not mental, creative, idea things. It's simple expressions of the heart. It's love. Love you. Amen. Now, in the name of Jesus, nobody in here is sick. If you were sick, you can't be sick now. Thank you, Lord. I command all sickness and disease to go. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful what the Lord did for your mama? So about 10 months ago, or 11 months ago or something, about a year ago, your mom was saying, I need to get a new pacemaker. Okay? She had no insurance. She had no insurance. I said to her, I said, oh, you're going to be fine. Angela said, you'll be fine. You're good. Healed in Jesus' name, right? Because that's what Jesus said. He said, oh, you're dead. Well, I'm, on, I'm, saying, I'm just saying what the Lord said. Don't blame it on me. What if she dies? She'll go to heaven. <laughs> She'll die in faith. And praise God. He said whether I live or die, I'm believing God. That's it. So it's, it's total abandonment. That's how you overcome fear. That's how you overcome the enemy. Amen? That's how you overcome. Love not your life even unto the death. The word of your testimony, what is it that you believe? The blood of the Lamb, and because you love not your life unto the death. So she goes to the doctor two days ago or so, yesterday, and she says, well, Doc, I'm just, and he's going to give her an exam. She said, well, I'm just believing God for complete healing. He said, well, it's a good thing because your pacemaker's been off for two, 10 months. <laughs> pacemaker, huh? 10 months. 10 months. Her base, pace, pacemaker's been off for 10 months. And furthermore, she had all these tests that would be, you know, stress test, stress cardiogram. test cardiogram, MRI, all these different things that were basically evaluating how well her pacemaker was working. Kind of <laughs> and she was coming out, you know, 100% on, on everything. She's passing all the tests. She's jogging on the treadmill. Jogging on the treadmill, no pacemaker. <laughs> what does it take to get out of the fear? Well, one of the things is total abandonment. Whether I live or whether I die, you get out of the fear. Now you're going to be able to go into the school of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. People don't, people, there's many things, gifts, people don't receive them. You know why people don't receive them? Fear. Oh, but what if I say something and it's not right? Well, what if you say something and it is right? What if you just say something? What if you never spoke again? What if you got in your car and it blew up? What if the sky fell? I mean, you know, there's, the end of, there's no end of the possibilities. Why not just believe God? Why not just do it? Why not like a simple childlike faith just do what father said to do just have it because it's yours right now i have seen over and again where the simplest minds i'm the simplest minds people who are a little bit on the edge of exaggerating anyways most of their life imaginative folks seem to step right on over into the gifting of the spirit and it's really the operating of the spirit well everybody who's the real thinker and really conservative and really want to make sure and evaluate and get nothing a whole lifetime of nothing hardly it's time to just be childlike it's time to be dream like father his dream giving us he's giving us dreams you know He's giving us dreams in his word. He's just giving us dreams. It's like he gave Joseph dreams. Go ahead and dream it with them. Go ahead and be it with them. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and do it with them. Hallelujah. Mangals to king and not Say it's all mine. It's all mine. Jesus gave it to me. It's all mine. Everything that he has. Holy Ghost, come transmit it to us. <laughs> Announce it to us. Heir, co-inheritor. Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them so they can be one, just like we're one. Father, just like you are in me, I in them. That kind of oneness. And people try to change it and make it something about us being one. He isn't talking about nothing about us being one. Huh? 
he's talking about. I said, what has he given it to us? Just dare to believe the Lord and everything will change. Amen. Just dare, just dare to take no thought for what you shall wear. Take no thought for what you shall eat. Take no thought for your life. Just dare to make everything the most important thing to you, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And watch that Father isn't going to give you everything. Everything. He's going to give you everything. He's going to give you everything. Amen. Amen. This is, this is the school of the Spirit. Stop trusting in yourself and trust God from here on out. That would take care of all the fear right there. Amen. Faith that works by love will cast out all the fear. Praise God. Hallelujah. Love casts out fear. Fear, if, you know what? I'm going to say this to you. I want you to hear this because, and I'm going to close with this. Faith that works, faith works by love. That's what scripture says. Okay? Doubt works by fear. And even worse than that, unbelief. Fear is your enemy. Fear is not your friend. Do not watch horror movies. Do not watch <laughs> the, you know, the vampire movies and all the other crazy movies and the, somebody's going to break into your bedroom and kill you movies. <laughs> no, and, I, and I'm saying this for a purpose because there's too many people who get high on the adrenaline from fear. You are nurturing a spiritual condition. There is no such thing as sterile there is no such thing as, oh, it's just for fun. Every event that goes on in your life has a spiritual consequence and spiritual impact. Let's go ahead and walk in the Spirit. You'll find that April Fool's won't even work for you because he so takes over your mouth and your tongue that jesting, you get convicted over jesting and foolish talking. True. And let's say you need to concern yourself about that right now because there's bigger issues. <laughs> Some people just need to concern themselves about cussing and saying and cursing themselves, which is worse than cussing. Huh? Okay, I'm going to tell you one story. <laughs> um, John Olstein, Joel Olstein's dad, Pentecostal preacher, was Baptist, got baptized in the Holy Ghost, did amazing things in missions. One day he's in one of these big buildings in Houston, Texas that in the elevator goes forever because of so many stories. And he's in the building and, you know, he's, he's hearing all of this cussing. You know, GD this, GD that. Finally, he sets his briefcase down and he hollers out, God, if they are going to damn you, I'm going to praise you. And he starts shouting, <laughs> praising God, lifting up his voice. Oh, my, the boldness that God has given to his people who know how to walk in the spirit and a direct divine connection that then brings Holy Ghost conviction when you do it, brings Holy Ghost conviction. You, you think, well, they're going to think I'm weird. Yeah, if you have faith to be weird, they probably are going to think that you're weird. If that's what you believe, I mean, you know, according to your faith, so be it. But... <laughs> I mean, reality of it is, is this brings the glory of heaven. These things bring the glory of heaven. They nothing. You might be weird, but God's not weird. Are you with me? And if you trust him, he'll make you like him and you won't be weird anymore. And you begin to be a blessing to people and you begin to, you be, begin to be one of those people that the Lord wants you to be, who is a carrier of his divine power and glory. A person who's able to minister and convey his presence. Amen? Amen. Like rivers coming out of you. Well, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Anybody sick or diseased in your body? Hurting? If you're watching me right now on the web, if you're sick or diseased in your body, I command you to be healed right now. There is the anointing of the Holy Spirit right there. You say, how do you know? Because God told me in his word, I feel his presence here. I announce what the Holy Ghost is announcing. That's what he said. He's never going to speak contrary to his word. And therefore, if you just simply be willing to accept what it is he said, you also feel the presence of the Lord. Because everything, everything, everything is about the anointing. When I begin to pray, first of all, I'm going to say this. I connect with the realm of the manifest presence of the Lord because my prayers are conveyed into the realms of divine, into the realms of his presence by the anointing. It's like incense. 
I wait for the anointing. That's why I pray in the Spirit first. I wait for the anointing. And then I'm now a manifest presence of the Lord. I'm hooked up. Here's my petitions, Father. Hear my supplications, Father. Hear the things I'm asking you to do, Father. And I'm asking you to heal them right now in Jesus' name. If you're watching by YouTube, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to be set free from whatever power of darkness is harassing you and tormenting you. In Jesus' name, from this day forward, you walk in peace that passes understanding under the rule and reign of the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Sickness and disease go out of the body in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't take any more than that, really. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody have any questions, concerns, needs, issues? Everybody ready to prophesy? Everybody, re can you, can everybody ready to, huh? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Can you just, can, you know, can you just pray in the Holy Ghost? Can you just? The more you but the more you, the more you participate with that, the stronger it gets. Okay. Well, it's an unlimited supply. Well, there's an unlimited supply of the Word of Knowledge too. You just got to participate with it. And there's an unlimited supply of prophecy. You just got to participate with it. Somebody said, okay, I want to participate. Where do I do that? Where do I participate? I tell you, praise and worship and prayer. Put your whole heart into it. Watch what happens. God will form in you that prophecy. It will form in you that as you praise and worship, it form in you that prophecy. As you pray, give yourself to the reading word. He give you, because word of knowledge is only, I'm going to say this. And once again, this is my second close. <laughs> word, the word of knowledge, as an phrase, is only really used one time in the Bible. It's really the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God comes from the word of God. And as we give ourselves in relationship to the Lord and we walk in his knowledge and we give ourselves to his knowledge, he gives a special knowledge then about people, about situations, about circumstances. Because in the same passage of Scripture, what we would call theologically the pericope of John 16, 13 through 15, God the Holy Ghost is going to show us things to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which can be revelatory, can be, well, revelatory can be the word of knowledge, revelatory can be the word of wisdom. Wisdom is the same way. His word brings wisdom. The, Spirit, the Holy Ghost gives wisdom. The Holy Ghost gives knowledge. He's a spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, right? Sevenfold anointing of Jesus, Isaiah chapter 11. Give yourself to these things. Where do you give yourself? Loving the word, eating the word, studying the word. He, to do the word, to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the word because I want to do this. I want this word of God to be a living reality in my life. And then the Lord just keeps adding to it, as it were, within our own lives and understanding to where that... You can read it again. Get up, read a chapter of the Bible in the morning. Read that same chapter in the evening. Read that same chapter the next morning and the next evening. And for the rest of your life, you're going to continue to get something out of it. True. I must, this is my third class. This is the last one. <laughs> First time I preached to a large group of people. It was at a Calvary Chapel retreat. I mean, first time I preached to a large group of people when I became pastor. It was Calvary Chapel Retreat. It was 1979, 1980. The then president of the Foursquare denomination was a man named Roy Hicks. And Roy Hicks had done, had, had, had done a series on the inerrancy and infallibility of the Word of God. But he had this one special tape and an address to all of the Foursquare denomination on the inerrancy of the Word of God. So what I did was I took the tape, I memorized the whole tape, and then I went and preached that. Because that way, it works that way. And one of the things in that, that tape that I memorized that Roy Hicks said is he said, when I was a young man, I looked up to the heavens and I said, Lord, how can your universe be so vast and expansive and infinite and your word be so finite and small? He stood there preaching that sermon at the age of 70 years old. And he said, now it's the other way around. I wonder how God's universe and creation could be so finite and small in his words, so infinite and vast. And it's true just the way it is. It's really true. I had no idea at that time that I was going to become good friends with Roy, you know, in the last 10 years of his life. What a blessing. And the Lord just puts all those things together for us. 
All we got to do is walk it out, just love him, want to be used by him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father loves you. Numbered every hair upon your head. Which is amazing love. An amazing expression of love. And he's purposed that everything that he has, you realize it. It's yours. As an heir and a co-inheritor with him. Stop believing the bad stuff that people are saying. Stop believing the accusations that the enemy's leveling at you. Start believing the good report. Start believing what God says. To whom has the power of God been revealed? Or to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? It's the power of God. To those who have believed his report. And it's rhetorical, Isaiah. Who has, believed, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up as a tender blade of grass or herb out of a dry ground. Speaking of Jesus, he's brought it all to us. It's yours. Don't be without it ever again. Don't be without these things ever again. Amen? Amen. Okay, we're done. We're not really done, but I'm finished. Is what I'm saying. You can stay here and just, the more, you st the more you praise, the more you worship, the more you pray, the more you stay in the presence of the Lord, the stronger the anointing gets, the stronger the expression gets. That grows as you walk this out with God. Do it every day. Stay here. This is the school of the Spirit. Amen.